can't talk skip. I'll drop them all, all day long. line right to Kansas. <clears throat> Hello Doc Hammer, how are you? Huh, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, it's dead quiet out here. It's pretty well dead quiet here too, ain't much going on. Looks like uh, you and me to kick off Classic Radio Roundup. Yep, that's kind of what it looks like. Forty four's out there too. I don't know if he's right exactly by the radio, but I talked to him two minutes ago. Oh, I'm sure he's in front of the boob tube by now. Hello? Come here, come in. What's going on? You tell me and we'll both know. Well, I think this one's working. And hearing the absence of Skip, I thought I'd go to a nice laid-back local radio. Pacer by Metrotech. Yeah, but how are your signals in the mud? Oh, it's a hundred watts of carrier. Are you going that phaser and it's pointed the wrong way or something? No, Doc Hammer is. Well, that's weird. You're giving me a five. Well, that's a... 100 watts carrier. Yeah, if you're giving me a 5 and the noise level is giving me a 3, which is kind of unusual. Well, you're giving me an 8, which is what I expect to see. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't think my antenna fell down. Oh, uh, yeah. What's my SWR here? Normal. So, why has it fallen down yet, anyway? Uh, you're giving me the normal signal. So I don't know what else to tell you. You hear me, right? And it is a, actually over 100 watts. Now something just changed because now you're giving me a seven and a half. I'm not doing anything. Well, noise level still at a three, but now you jump from a five to a seven and a half. I'm not doing anything different. You sound a lot better too. You're now fully quieting the noise. Well, maybe the Metro Technics just needed to blow some dust out. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, if you're looking at your watt meter and seeing, you know, the same amount of power, that hasn't changed. Unless you, unless you got another feed line problem like you had, like, last year or something. Well, that's always a possibility. Yeah, or it wasn't making good contact. Yeah, how to dry out the coax. Yeah, we haven't had any rain recently, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. No, that don't mean nothing. Oh, that's when you're in Indiana. Appreciate that. Oh, no, we do have Skip. <laughs> you just popped in there and now. Yeah, I figured I'd give this Midland 8, 13 879 another try. But if it gets too noisy, I may have to change that plan. 
Well, I think the pacer will do all right, unless it gets out of control. Well, I'll hear you probably, because my beam will knock a lot of that skip down once I turn it, you know, turn it around. Other people may not, uh, may not feel the same way. Hey, 410, sounds good, Diane Hampton showed up. Uh, there's a guy in Indiana coming in just underneath you. Well, ain't that something? I can crank the mic up a little bit. I don't know if that's going to make a lot of difference, though. Ah, oh, that's all right. He's just underneath you. It's like somebody just flipped a switch. I didn't hear any skip at all. Now here it is. Well, you know, it's time for Classic Radio Roundup, you know, so I want to get in here and say hi. Howdy, howdy, on Classic Radio Roundup. Yeah, I gotta get my my cleaning uh, supplies out. Clean this radio up a little bit. It wasn't too bad. A couple of nicks in the wooden case, but uh, not too bad. But the power supply is 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 a little a little weak. I thought maybe uh, the the, the, right, the four-way rectifier diodes were bad. You know, because I was only getting about 17 or 18 volts unregulated. And, of course, you know, when you try to regulate it down to 14 or 13.8 volts, and then when you key up and the load, the extra load brings the raw DC down below, uh, you know, 15 volts and it starts to collapse, you know, because it wants to see a bigger, wants to see a bigger uh, d uh, delta between unregulated and regulated, you know, so it, it has a bigger pool of volts to pull from, I guess. Or, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is always that way or not, but it, it, it bothers me that the lights are dimming, and it also makes the thing backswing a little bit, and I don't like that either. Yeah, I can see the backswing on the on the Metrotech Pacer here. And, uh, yeah, backswing is never a good thing. But it does sound all right, if that's any consolation. And uh, just, to, just to rehash, this Metrotech Pacer came from Tim, North Wales Tim. When I got it from him, it was wrapped in saran wrap. And it's still cream puff, brandy new, night train type accepted condition. <coughs> That's about Willie. has a, a Metro Tech Mustang and a Pacer there. <laughs> I saw that. I have a, a, Metro, uh, a Pacer and a Mustang too. Yeah. It's a Mustang too, also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one you got the power mic on. Yeah, that thing still sort of works or doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know what the, weird, I don't know what the deal is with that. Those pressure radios was good. Right? Probably a good contact cleaning on the microphone will solve the problem. Yeah, let's hope so. Waiting on that round to it to show up. Yeah, I hear you. We're at a softball uh, clinic today. And we start a three-day tournament tomorrow. Oh, yay. I had an AC guy over today. Brand new heater and AC unit installed last September. We tested it. Sounds great. Well, since we've been using the AC this summer, the compressor outside making a lot of noise. I'm like, well, this ain't right. We spent extra money to get the low decibel unit so we don't have to shout over the damn thing or hear it in the house. And here... Here it is making all kinds of noise. So the guy comes out, he's an older guy with a young kid, and uh, he starts, uh, we, we start it up, and I'm like, the son of a bitch, it's not making the noise now. It's been making it since we've been using it, and of course now that you're here, it's not making a noise. But it sort of maybe might be there, I'm not sure. He says, eh, let me check things out. He says, I got an idea. So he takes the top off, looks at the, uh, there's a shroud around the fan there, plastic kind of shroud thingy. And he uh, checks that all out. Oh, good clearance and everything, but what he does is, he says, hang on, I got an idea. <clears throat> Starts drilling holes at the top of the thing there in a, in a shroud mounting circle. Drills four extra holes from the four that are there. Puts screws in it and takes care of the problem. He says, the only reason I know this is because this same exact model... You know, we, we sold a crap load of them, and one other one had the same sort of noise issue. <clears throat> and he says when it gets hot, that shrouding would 
distorts and rubs on the fan. And I only know this because it happened to one other one, so I thought I'd try it. I like, yeah, I think you fixed the problem. So I haven't heard the noise since. Well, there you go. There's, there's, a, there's the old guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have an experienced guy out there working on things. They had run into the same problem before. Enjoy the weekend, having fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what happens. When you've seen the problem before, then you go, aha, you know, I've seen this, I know what this is. If you've never seen the problem, then you're going to sit there and scratch your head. Oh, five years. Yeah, he'd already figured out the problem on somebody else. Yeah, so their pain was your game. Oh, poor, I'm getting off. It's funny. Four, four more screws in the thing that doesn't come with from the factory and solves the problem. So that, like, that made the fan shroud a little bit more secure? Uh, I guess that's the thing. Now it's getting a little trashy, right? That makes sense. You know, the fan shroud is uh, secure only at four points and he added four more and uh, that's going to make it uh, twice as secure. Yeah. All I care about is I don't hear it. I spent more money so I didn't have to hear the thing. It's dead, so stop talking about it. No, it's not dead. It's just quiet. In the photo right. right, okay. Just like it's dead. Okay. It's dead quiet so I could quit talking about it. About two hundred feet. If you put any more that it'll burn up, but hell I could talk skill, do whatever I wanted to. It just wasn't a real powerful thing, but uh it just it worked for what I want. I just talked to locals here around me going to work. Every every man in hell, most of them quit, so I just took it out. But yeah, it was a good little man too. Sprinkles in the flatlands. Is that you, Doc? You don't have any sprinkles in your flatland, huh? No, we got storms in our flatland. Nice this morning, and it was nice this evening. I slept through the rest of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, today was a little bit nicer than uh, yesterday. It wasn't quite as brutally hot, but it uh, still seemed to be kind of humid, though. Well, that was my take on it. It seemed to be a lot more humid this morning. Not as hot as the last couple of days, but there was no humidity the last couple of days. So the temperature was less. The humidity was higher. So I'd take the, the previous two over today. Yeah, to me it felt about the same. Uh, it's, it's killing me though. It's like I'm out in the, out in the heat and it's just not in my strength. I get all weak and tired. Uh, I, went the, uh, I went up uh, the mountains on Monday. I got out of jury duty early. They uh, dismissed us because they didn't have a case for us. So I ran home and hooked the boat up to the truck and took off and went up to the mountains with the boat. By the time I got all done messing with that, it was hot up there. I, I was so damn tired, I laid down in the trailer and took a nap. <laughs> and I got up and I uh, had dinner and took an evening ride in the boat, and that was real nice. It, was, it cooled off by then. Hey, I'd be glad you weren't in Montgomery County to get stuck on the Cosby case. <laughs> oh, it was funny, because the, 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 the judge came down to the, uh, the jury room that talked to us and said, uh, I had a five-day murder case set up for you guys, and, and come Friday they came and asked for a continuation because they had more evidence to to, uh, to present. And I'm like, oh, that's good. And he goes, and we had a backup case, and uh, right up till this morning, and until the guy uh, got cold feet or whatever, and he decided to change his plea to guilty, and 
Well, we just had to send him away. <laughs> so we have nothing more for you. So uh, we're going to dismiss you early today. I'm like, yes. Nice to catch a break. Yeah, that's, uh, that's divine intervention right there. You know, that gave me my opportunity to get up to the mountains because I haven't been up there, you know, just haven't had a chance between weather and softball, you know. And, and so uh, I went up there on Monday, came back yesterday, and because I had to be ready for today. And, you know, like I say, it's going to be uh, today, tomorrow, Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday is, is, is softball. And then uh, come next week, it's the same thing again. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I may not make it up there again until the near Fourth of July week. You know, because we take, we're taking that week off. Me too. Yeah. All right, skier, you coming up the mountain? I'll be off that week though, but I gotta go walk the dog. I shall return. Lots of ops you. Alrighty then. Yeah. Alrighty then. Yeah, there you are. Hello, Skeeter. Take the dog out. Roger, right on. Yeah, get your nerve list prepping. Skip won't get to me. I hear you, Blue Max. I'll have to throw the antenna back towards you a little bit because uh, you're, uh, you're, you're in a different direction than where I normally uh, talk. So as I'm talking here, I, uh, I'm rotating the beam a little bit so I should hear you a little bit better now. Hey, you probably don't even need to go that far. Yeah, I mean, a, a five to a twin, almost a nine. Skip is. It's, it's dead one second. Next thing you know, it's in there. Hey, Blue Max. Rock Hammer. Yeah, back up. Yeah, I hear you. Monkey man, monkey man, look what you did. <laughs> I turn on the radio, and all I heard was something about Tiki D. <laughs> if you wasn't such a jerk, monkey man, I'd invite you over for some cold Coronas, and we could go sit in my Tiki Beach. But no. But no, no, monkey man, you gotta be a jerk. Why you gotta be a jerk, monkey man? We can hang out on my imported Italian leather sofa and watch movies from Cold Cracker Productions. <laughs> and drop your food up on Thunderbox. Guilty laughing at that only because I know what he, I know the condition he's in now, and I feel almost, I feel bad. But it's still funny. It'll always be funny. Yeah. <clears throat> On Classic Radio Roundup. 
Show you right. Round up. That's right. That's right. Sponsored this week by the Zero Five Institute of Technology. Oh, there's Doc Hammer. Doc Hammer's been in here before you. Oh. <clears throat> you. Okay. He's just above the noise. I'll have to boot the antenna again. Can't get nobody, well, but I ain't getting you dirty. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's uh, hanging out in the branches right now. Who's hanging out in the branches? The monkeys? No, oh, I drove it out of it. The gay space monkeys? Ah, uh, Sparky. <laughs> hey, I'll call it all my second cousin I had. Sparky's a gay space monkey, according to that guy out in Skipland. I guess I must have missed that. That must have been after I uh, bugged out last week. It was during the roundup, but yeah, it must have been after you bugged out. Skipland came in there and there was this guy just, just harassing Sparky. <clears throat> I don't know why they were just picking on him and nobody else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get out just as well as he does, you know. And he, he, he zeroed right in on Sparky. guy at skip land will be sure to tell you did you catch a handle off of him or is he just a just your general agitator yeah i don't know what he was like i said i couldn't even hear him at first and then i started throwing the antenna around so i could hear what the antics he was jumping up and down around so i don't really know where he was i just assumed that you know he was some kind of mm. you know, detractor from mr murphy and somehow he, he gulped sparky in with mr murphy because we talked to him when the skips rolling, and he's saying he was calling Mr. Murphy gay, and you know everybody that talks to him is gay, and he's working his mouth, and he's and Mr. Murphy moved to Arizona, and all a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, you can always review the video gate for last week there, Doc Hammer. It's on there. Preserved forever on the video gate. <laughs> That's the cool thing about doing those, you know. You, you know, I'm always ready to catch whatever antics happen or, or may or may not happen. You never know what can happen on classic radio around us. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been agitated by any skip land focus like that. <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, how often do you guys get uh, outside of the air? Uh, from Grumpy, uh, skip in on, on uh, classic radio nights. 
Yeah, and we even had uh, on the Sunday night ham snub lap there, we had uh, uh, Mike uh, Night Ranger check in with us. So it's not just here, it's there. I've been trying to uh, tune in a couple times on the Sunday night stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, Night Ranger, he, he's a ham. He checked in with us. He hung out for a whole hour with us this past Sunday night on 10 meters. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, but he was in there for a good hour, and then it started doing that spotlight thing, and shoot, he's gone. Yeah, I knew something was up, because all of a sudden I couldn't hear him anymore, and you still <laughs> could, and then all of a sudden he was back in strong with me, and you couldn't hear him anymore, and I thought, well, it's going to go. It did that once before, exactly like that. So there's got to be some kind of weird perturbation there in the atmosphere that causes that. Yeah, and, and and if we didn't know each other and the whole, you know, the whole scenario, only 10 miles apart, we would never know that that kind of phenomenon even exists. I and mean, that's just you know, mind-blowing. Like, makes you like radio is such magic. Well, that's what I mean. Some people think that skip is, like, universal. It goes everywhere equally. And, you know, some days you get one state, some days you get another, but, you know, some days it, it, it's not like that at all. It, uh, it favors one way, one area or another. And even, you know, your local area, sometimes they can hear you, but you can't hear them and vice versa. Yeah, and a good example last week, hot and heavy DX going on. And out, out in Doc Hammer's local Kansas wheat field, there was, there was zero skip. Yeah, we've talked to Doc Hammer direct through Skip many a time. Yeah, but usually you need F layer for that. Yeah, that's usually when it happens. It's not. It'll probably be a while before we could do that again. Yep. Yeah. That usually only happens in the winter time and then the fall. But you you are within range of uh, of E scare uh, E scare. <laughs> Uh, e, e skip, you are you are you are within that range. So you know your short F and your long E. Yeah, we've had Fixer check in. He's from the round or from the the board. Who else has checked in uh, from Skip Land? Uh, a couple guys. Uh, but I Chicken. Cause you don't hear from him too much anymore. He checked in. And, uh, there's been a couple. Three zero five checking in. I'll be back in Belmont. Hello, three zero five. You're checked in the classic radio roundup. And Roger that. Skip Land Roger right on. Working this uh, eight channel. 8 tube Metro Tech Pacer technology. Yeah, working this three knob, one meter, one one transmit light Midland technology. I have a transmit slash spotter light. Yeah, I got I got a light in the meter, a light on the channel selector, and a light that lights up and flickers when I talk. I can't get much simpler than that. That sounds like my old TRC-24 used to do. Uh, I remember the TRC. The 24A had the little modulation light on it. Yep. Well, I got eight-channel crystal control with a tunable receiver. Actually, the TRC-24 was uh, had more buttons on it than this thing does. It had a noise blanker and a PA button on it. I can work split with this radio. Yeah, it was my very first CB radio. Yeah, that was a good radio. Uh, that was one of our most popular uh, global radios for a while there. Oh yeah, and it still works. I mean, uh, I beat the daylights out of it and it still works. 
Yeah, they were like Timexes, man. They'd take a lick and keep on ticking. Yeah, well, do you remember the, uh, the, um, the one, uh, the, what did they call it, the, the, the Mini 6 or the Micro 6? Min, Mini 6, I think it was called. Yeah, I got one of the drawer over here. That was a super radio. Yeah, well, I didn't like the wired in mic. It was a six wire mic, so it was really kind of a pain to put anything more powerful on it. But it did the job for what it was. It was, uh, I only got rid of it because I couldn't find crystals for it anymore. Yeah, I've got, I've got it, I wanted a drawer, I've got channel 13 in it, which is all that really matters, and a bunch of other channels, but... <laughs> it used to belong to my neighbor back in the day, he bought it for, uh, he bought it, he bought it in a, in a power supply for a hundred dollars. That's how much those things cost back then. Oh yeah, I remember. I used to work for Radio Shack, so I sold 